you give me a thumbs up? Okay. It is 7 p.m. This is the TAK regular city council meeting for Monday, July 15th. Will everybody please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence. Please be seated. Okay, a little housekeeping before we get started. I'd like to make some agenda changes before we get started. First, I'd like to make a motion to add an executive session to the agenda to discuss personal matters and to obtain legal advice regarding signage and to return to the executive session um, afterwards to hold a vote if council so chooses. And I'd like to uh, drop item 1B, the proclamation thanking the sponsors for the Memorial Day 5K run. They're not here today. And to drop item 7, B, the introduction of the first reading to the ordinance to amend chapter 2, article 5, uh, division 2 and 3. We just haven't had enough time to look that over. We'd like to push that back about a month. If everybody's in favor of that, please signify. Well, first Mr. I need a Mr. second. Mr. Mayor, I, I think you misspoke. You, you, you said return to executive session to vote. I think yes. you meant public session. Return to public se session to vote if council so chooses. Uh, do I have a second on those items? Second. Uh, if everybody's in favor of that, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, we've so noted on that. Okay. Opposed. You oppose. Okay. okay. One, so it's four to one. Okay. So let's start with presentation. Proclamation recognizing Jacob Petit on achieving the Eagle Scout. Is he here today? Okay, good. So we can start with that. your Eagle Scout uh, project? Uh, my Eagle Scout project was a ADA wheelchair and adaptive swing that I planned and built in Trailhead Park. I remember that. Uh, it, it is for uh, disabled or like it's for disabled and, and ch like handicapped children who do not have the ability to enjoy like a regular swing set. So I went around getting donations and fundraising during, for about half a year to to order and build this swing. Good. Are you with Troop 250? Yeah. Good. Okay. So let's read this proclamation. Proclamation re recognizing Eagle Scout Jacob Petit. Am I saying your last name correctly? Yep. Okay. Whereas Jacob Petit has proven himself to be an outstanding member of the Boy Scouts of America and whereas the Eagle Scout Award is a distinction that will follow him throughout his life and will be a beacon to others of the leadership, quality, and commitment this young man has shown. And whereas citizens of the city of TK appreciate his hard work and, raise, and, and to raise funds and install an ADA accessible swing for Trailhead Park. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the mayor and city council of the city of TK duly assembled do hereby congratulate and recognize Jacob Petit for his achievement in becoming an Eagle Scout. It is our honor to give him as a member of our community. <laughs> parents, don't you have your parents come on up here too? Get a picture with them. And we also have another thing very special for you here. We have a congratulatory letter from Congressman Ralph Norman. We also have this certificate from him also. You can put that right there in front of me. Another picture? Come on yeah. up here, Mom. You get up here with him. I'll get out of the way. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Here, take this letter. Here, you want me to keep that. Do I have another thing from up here? This is, 
the readingest job I've ever had. Okay, next marketing update from Vanja Burris. Did I say your name right? Yes, you did. All right. Good evening. As you mentioned, I'm Sandra Burris. Oh, Sandra, I'm sorry. Sandra. That's okay. Sandra Burris, Senior VP of Marketing and Communications with Visit York County. We, on behalf of the staff with Visit York County, we'd like to thank you for a great year. TK supported Visit York County with $8,000 in hospitality tax funding this year for our organization to provide events and marketing services to the city. We hope that you will consider that funding again next year. So I'll go over a little bit of uh, the year in review with you for the fiscal year 2018 and 2019 and some new initiatives that we uh, laid or rolled out this, that, in that fiscal year. For instance, we have the Yoko Brew Trail, and it was an initiative that uh, honored or recognized the emerging breweries in the area. So we were able to roll that out through our uh, mobile app. And then the Destination Marketing Fee Program. This program was actually put in place to offset the cost that we essentially lost from the York County age tax funding. Uh, many of you may know that we we lost $900,000 from the York County H tax. So this program is put into place, and it's a program where the hotels can actually charge up to 3%. Our hotels are going to be charging 2% on room rates to its customers. Um, at any time if the customer decide that they do not want to pay that fee, they can uh, go to the front desk, and that can't, will be removed for, uh, for them. And we have about eight to ten hotels enrolled in the program currently. Next, we have the Battle at the Rock Basketball Showcase. It's our very first basketball uh, showcase that we hosted in uh, 2018, and it was very successful. And then we introduced the Mobile Visitor Center, which is, you know, we, we have a, a, a brick and mortar, but, you know, Sometimes you have to go to the visitor. So now we have a mobile visitor center that we call Vizzy. And Vizzy goes out, it's a cargo van, and Vizzy goes out to a, a, any program or event that's bringing out the masses. We want to make sure that Vizzy is there and we're distributing information to the visitors as well as locals at those, those programs. And then we were also able to hire a digital communications manager this year who um, is in charge of all of our social media content, um, web uh, development content, um, and it's been a pleasure to have her be with us this year. And we also introduced the MLK Basketball Showcase in January of this year, which was another basketball, basketball program, which compri was mostly comprised of local schools in the area. And finally, we ha hosted our first annual meeting where we were able to give everyone an update on uh, the things that we, the new initiatives and things that we rolled out and how successful tourism, travel and tourism was for your county in that fiscal year. Continuing on with new initiatives, we were also uh, able to get 100% funding from all of our municipalities this, in that fiscal year. And we also was able to introduce some new sponsor funding uh, via the Brew Trail as well as our annual meeting event. We also decided that regional marketing was very um, was something that we wanted to do more of. So we were able to um, do some things with Charlotte Magazine as well as South Carolina Living Magazine. We also introduced Road Trips Your Count, Road Trip Your County, which is now a YouTube series where we where our digital communications manager she gets out there and basically it's a video series where you she tr truly takes you through the road um, down the journey off the beaten path to different areas in your county to show you um, what what all the great amenities we have here in your county. So if you haven't subscribed, be sure to subscribe to Ro uh, Road Trip Your County. Um, we also introduced a new website in May of, of, of that last fiscal year. This website is now more uh, interactive and very easy to navigate. Um, there's also a um, 
a shopping cart on site where if you're if you're navigating the website and there's uh, different things that you want to places you want to go and see and things you want to do you can actually click on those attractions and it'll and at the very end you can print out a guide for yourself and then the destinations international economic impact calculator was also something that we was able to uh, purchase and this is more so in line with the direct we were able to ca calculate the direct spending for many of our sports events with that uh, economic calculator measuring success with the introduction of the Yoko Brew Trail in September it really took off it, it gave our app the momentum that it needed and just ignited some new energy with our visitors and and in February of this year uh, Governor McMaster awarded us the Bundy Award at the South Carolina Governors Conference for Outstanding Attraction. We also, so that's a state award, and we also receive a national award uh, for the Battle at, uh, at the Rock Basketball Showcase this year. Uh, the NASC uh, gave us the uh, Locally Created Event of the Year Award, so that was a national award that we were proud of. Also, um, in t we also hosted a group of journalists and writers Earlier, earlier this year in February, and it was about 12 journalists and writers in that group. And this is an opportunity where we invite journalists and, and uh, writers. We partner with South Carolina uh, PRT and the Old English District, and we hosted these writers throughout York County. So we were able to showcase, you, uh, showcase what you, York County was all about by taking them to different attractions and areas in York County. And there was a USA Today journalist in, that, in the mix um, during that time period, and we were at, she, sat next, she sat beside me at dinner. So we were able to talk about uh, York, and it had not been for that, she, we probably wouldn't be up here, but we received the USA Today Top 10, 10, 10 Best Reader's Choice Travel Award for Best Small Town Cultural Scene. And we did that by once they, you know, initiated the, 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 the judging or the contest, we were able to use social media to push that through and as well um, what the city was able to jump on that as well. We had over 100 stories published this year compared to 40, 41 stories published last year and had 4,143,086 impressions across all social channels, 181% increase from the previous fiscal year. So tourism is big business in York County, and the partners and the Panthers coming to Rock Hill will change towards the tourism landscape of this region. So we're excited about that. And in 2017, 245 <coughs> million in visitor spending was collected. Uh, also in that year, 5.79 million in local tax revenue was collected. And that resulted in uh, tourism in York County saved every household $245 per year in taxes paid. So we'll talk, show you a little graph here that shows you the difference in the two fiscal years. Um, as you can see, we have the <coughs> majority of this uh, funding coming from York County, which is at 82% last fiscal year, and then 7% like that was from Rock Hill, and then Fort, Fort Mill was the 3%, and there was another 3% from see grants, and then others uh, would have been the 1%. And then in the 2019-2020 uh, the fiscal year, it'll be a little bit of a change. We'll have 62% in York County funding, 7% with Rock Hill funding, and 4% for um, Fort Mill, and looks like that's 3% uh, with grants, and then 20% with our destination marketing fee program. So that's the new initiative that we launched this year. So we're expecting that to do really successful for us. And then the 2% with other. 
So events in Tiga K for the 2018-2019 year was in 2019, we hosted the U.S. Pro Mini Golf Association U.S. Open here at Mr. Putty's Fun Park. That resulted in 64 professional mini golfers across, com, that came in from across the country, 99,613 total estimated economic impact, approximately 100 in, uh, in total attend, attendance. And the award ceremony was held here at the Glennon Center. We also participated in the Croquet, croquet Network State Shield Southeast Quad Tournament, June 7th through the 9th, here at the TGK Croquet Course at TGK Golf Club. There was 14 nationally ranked croquet players across the Southeast, resulting in 12,481 total estimated economic impact. And that was approximately 50 total attendees. Services currently offered to TKK, as we mentioned, VISI, our mobile visitor center, is um, we want to get VISI out as much as we can to different events. So whenever we can get VISI to TKK, we'll get VISI to TKK as well. Um, we would we love to do more with getting uh, events here at the Glennon Center, including, and it's also included in our meetings and facilities guide. Visibil visibility in 15 bro brochures uh, distributed to 40,000 visitors annually is where we listed Tiga K. We also have a Tiga K tear-off map distributed at our visitor center and area hotels. Promotion of events, attractions, and restaurants on social media, visit your county app, as well as visit yourcounty.com. And this here is our, the July issue of the YC Magazine is where we actually wrote an article about golfing in your county. And we did talk about in that, in that article, we um, listed um, the Tiga Gay Golf Club and um, promoted visiting the Tiga Gay Golf Club through the Mountains to Midlands Golf Alliance and the Old English District Guide. With marketing communications, we had two staff members and a third, including our president, to serve at, on the local organizing committee for the Taste of York County at the Glennon Center. And Visit York County also assisted with the marketing efforts of that event as well. Visit York County has produced marketing that has recognized Tiga K in various blogs, newsletters, our social media platforms, our app. Um, we would uh, do push notifications on such events as the Tiga K Concert Series, the Mr. Putty's Fun Park USA Open, everything that you could. We had a, a blog written about everything that you could, that you should know about fireworks and the 4th of July uh, happenings in your county. We also had a blog on 10 things that dad actually wants to do for Father's Day that included TGK as well. And also beat the heat in York County with things to stay cool. Places to take your, your dog in York County featured your dog park. And summer, again, the summer concert bucket list, you guys are included in that. And also the 10 things to do Memorial Day weekend in every May event you can't miss in your county. So those were some of the things. And we continued on with our Yoko Buzz newsletter. We have a subscription of 1,300 uh, subscribers. And we promoted all, your t all Tiga K events through our events calendar and through the Yoko Buzz, which is our newsletter that you see there. Request for H tax funding, Visit York County will continue to invest that funding back into Tiga K to bring more events to the area, more leisure travel, increase marketing, increase exposure, promote your events and attractions and restaurants. And um, we will do our best to get more events to the Glennon Center. Mobile Visitor Center will be uh, available again for any event that you um, would like her to be at and social media choreography, and increase marketing and promote uh, special events through Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and our app. So tourism, tourism creates dollars, and there is a circle of life when tourism supports economic development that turns back to supporting additional 
tourism. The more tourists we bring to Tika K, the more hospitality fund hospitality tax funding you can generate that will assist you in meeting your goals and objectives for the city of Tika K. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? No questions. <clears throat> All right, let's move to item two, A, TGK Forever Foundation. Who's got that? Who does? Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of council, uh, based on your nominations, uh, the, uh, on your committee appointments, uh, Sharon uh, the Onofrio, I believe is how her uh, last name is, received uh, five nominations uh, for the one open position. Uh, Nick Amico um, and Matt DeWitt both received the top nominations for the Planning Commission. Matt DeWitt's was uh, five nominations, and Nick Amico was four nominations uh, for the two open planning commission or two open planning commission seats that are available there mm -hmm. uh, for your consideration this evening. All right, very good. Congrats. Are they here? You need to make them. Congrats. We're good. We got to make a motion to approve them. I don't think so. We just have to make a motion to approve you, I think. All right. I'd like to make a motion to approve. Um, I don't have the first. What's their names again? Sharon. You can say as stated by the city manager, it's Sharon Deanna Frio, Nick Amico, and Matt DeWitt. As, as mentioned, um, <laughs> we'll capture it in the minutes. Yes. Second. Second. Uh, I'm good. Uh, all approved, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? No. All approved. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Congrats, everybody. Look forward to working with you. Okay, item number three is public comments. Uh, first on the list is Frank Ambrose. Stand, come forward for your three minutes in the spotlight. Please state your name and address. My name is Frank Ambrose. I live at 8042 Windjammer Drive. I uh, appreciate your time um, for hearing me, um, taking my role as a government teacher, I guess, to heart, speaking my mind um, to an elected group. I'm here to talk about the changes that have been just sent to the residents on Windjammer about the parking uh, there with the four guest passes for a home that I have purchased to have guests park at my house. I now have to have a permit. Uh, and if I want extras, I have to contact the city and go through those uh, channels as well. It was brought to my attention that there were 43 houses or addresses that were asked to sign a petition. Uh, of the 43, I believe there was one no. Uh, there were three others. One was signaled not at home. My address and a, a neighbor of mine were not even contacted. I spoke to the people who were doing the survey, walking down my street, and they went right by me and put me down on that form as not having any contact. That is wrong. That is not how a democracy operates. They know where I live. If it meant that much, then they should contact all 43 members that live on that street that are affected by this. If we're here to work out the differences or what is a best solution than get those impacted at the table to make suggestions. Putting a no parking from 7 to 5 on a side of the street with residents having to get guest passes is not the best solution. There are so many other things out there. Why this one park? Why this one park is signaled out of the 16 parks that we have in Tiga K that make it you know, uh, a great place to live. I've lived on Point Clear. I've lived next to Ryan. Parking's the same down on that street. There's no way. You have to park on one side if you want to have guests. Are they going to have to get guest resident or guest permits there? No. Why is this one area signal singled out? Make it a blanket across Tiga K, that's fine. But why this one area? I think that's wrong. There are other more accommodating things that we can do put a parking kiosk, put a no parking on one side of the street. If public safety is a concern, 
so safety vehicles can get down then put park no parking on one side of the street put a uh, make passes more readily available put a parking attendant whatever but this is not the answer to just blanket knee-jerk reaction to a few citizens who do not want people using our public spaces thank you Thanks. Next up, uh, Dan Dunn, come up for your three minutes. Please state your name and your address, please, Dan. All right, I am Daniel Dunn at 1071 Hunters Run Drive. Council members, police, friends in the gallery, thank you for letting me have a moment to come up here and speak. Many family members, friends, and colleagues are not going to like what I have to say this evening but I feel I cannot stay silent on this matter. It has come to my attention that there is a monument on the grounds of the new police station with biblical scripture and other religious references. I personally have no problem with religion as I am a practicing churchgoer myself. I also have no problem with people expressing their beliefs at their home or business. What I do have a problem with is religious references on government property, especially law enforcement. Public grounds and public services should remain secular and neutral for all members of the community. All members. So they should feel welcome here. The monument in question does not do that. That makes TGK look exclusionary and biased towards one specific group at the expense of others. That is not my TGK. Is that yours? I applaud the kindness and generosity of the Women's Club who donated this item, most likely intending no will. I also applaud and fully support our police force and root for their safety and ability to go home at the end of their shift unharmed. That said, there are proper places for certain things. The TKK police station is not the place for a religious memento. I would highly recommend a modification, a relocation, or removal of the boulder before TKK ends up in a legal quagmire, which very well could happen if nothing is done here. In addition, I would implore all our public officials to be more mindful of the fact that not all TGK residents think alike or worship alike. They should keep all their citizens in mind, all citizens, when they make decisions on matters like this. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Very well said. Next is Bill. Is it Annan? Come on up, Bill. Please state your name and address. Eighty ten one Jimmer, Colonel Council. Thanks for having me. Um, I'm also here to talk about the uh, Windjammer parking debacle situation, whatever that is. Um, you know, I live at the corner of Windjammer and Kiwi. Every weekend, I see young couples, I see minorities, I see lots of people parking on the street, wandering down to the beach to have a good time, which is our motto: the good life, right? <laughs> So by putting up no parking signs and then blocking these people all the way up to Silver Fox is going to make them walk twice as far, okay? <clears throat> Which makes no sense because the same people complaining about this are the same people that also put, uh, put the kibosh on the sidewalk two years ago and the RFAT's money went somewhere else. So <sighs> just the simple fact that if we each have four parking passes and there's 40 houses, that means we can have 160 different people parking on Windjammer, which literally makes the problem as bad or worse because the only time we ever have a problem is on Memorial Day and Labor Day. It's pretty much the, 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 this is an overreaction. I think it's ridiculous. I think it's exclusionary, to the other guy's point. I don't think that's a neighborhood we live in. I don't think I'm looking at a bunch of racists up here that don't like minorities or poor people or anything else. And I just think this is a complete overreaction. I don't think it's fair to all involved. I don't think it spreads goodwill or, uh, or friendship, and it's, it's certainly not fair. So that's all I have. Thanks, Bill. Those are very good comments. All right. Item four is approval of minutes for both the regular council and the special council. Council, you've seen the minutes. Any additions, deletions, subtractions, any changes? Okay. Hearing none, they stand as published. Item number five, committee reports. Heather on TUK Forever Foundation and economic development. Okay, well, I'll be short and sweet. TK Forever did not meet this month, so check that one off. Um, Economic Development Commission, a um, couple just quick announcements. Um, Ashley Sullivan was appointed as secretary. They met on um, June 24th. 
they are currently meeting actually right now, um, and they are doing an informal meeting, probably somewhere in this building actually, um, to determine a few things. They were each tasked to determine one to two developers for the group to review and discuss to bring in economic development from the outside, determine one to two cities um, open to the outside of the Carolinas that share similarities with TGK for the group and to review and discuss, and then finally to make suggestions for economic development committee pitch book um, and for marketing material. So they were tasked with some to-do items, which they are informally meeting about right now, um, to then take into their August meeting so that they are ready to um, move the ball down the road. So very quick, short synopsis, that's what I got. All right, very good, thank you. Uh, item 5C is Planning Commission, Alicia. Thank you so much, Mayor and members of Council. The Planning Commission met on July 1st, and for the uh, newbies in the crowd, we meet the first Monday of every month in this room at 6.30, so uh, put it on your calendars for the next four years, four-year term. Uh, <laughs> uh, we had conversations um, about the annexation and rezoning of a portion of um, property adjacent to Wind, Wind Haven in the Windhaven development, and this will allow additional connectivity within that subdivision. Um, they, this will be coming to council in August, so just a heads up on that. Um, we also elected our vice chairman to fill Larry Franklin's uh, temporary, or to fill his term, and we, um, or they elected Jason Pitcock. We had conversations about the um, comprehensive plan uh, update progress and um, there is a crowdsourcing app that um, Susan is working hard on and the rollout on that was planned for July 15th if that still happened It'll be later, this week. later this week so be looking for a crowdsourcing app which will allow people to comment on um, different areas throughout the city um, that have capital projects and, um, and plans and that pretty much wraps it up. Okay, let's move on to item six, unfinished business. This is a second reading of an ordinance to provide for Duke Energy Franchise Agreement. Uh, the, executive sesh, the executive summary is Duke Energy, York Electric, Comporium, and Spectrum are all required to pay a franchise fee on gross receipts collected within the municipal boundaries. The Duke Energy Agreement is set to expire this month. The ordinance renews this agreement for another five years and provides two additional five-year renewals. They will continue to pay to the city 5% of their gross receipts collected from within the city. And since Alicia uh, works for Duke, she is recus recusing herself from this vote. Yes, thank you. Okay. Are there any questions? No questions. There is any questions from the audience? Okay, I will entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, members of council, motion to approve the second reading of an ordinance to provide for the Duke Energy Franchise Agreement. I have a motion, I have a second. Second. Second from Mr. Gus Machunis. Um, okay, we're ready to vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, it's unanimous. It's fine. 7A is some new business, resolution reappointing chief municipal judge and a setting a term of office. This resolution reappoints Mr. Justin Bice as the city's chief municipal judge and sets a term of office of four years beginning October 1st, 2019 in order to align with the city's fiscal year. The resolution also provides that Judge Bice will continue serving in this role in an interval between his current term and the beginning of a new term. Are there any questions? Hearing no questions, I will entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, members of council, I'd like to make a motion to approve a resolution reappointing chief municipal judge and setting terms of office. I have a motion, do I have a second? Second. Second from Alicia. Dash. Any questions? Any questions from the audience? Hearing none, it's time to vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, it is unanimous. Six, seven B. We uh, move to a future date. Let's move to seven uh, C. Moving right along. C. Boys. 
7C, discussion regarding recycling and adoption of enforcement rules. Lacey Armstrong, our communication manager, has done an outstanding job in communicating to our residents what is and what isn't recyclable. Unfortunately, we have had several sections of the city who just aren't following the rules and potentially putting the city as a whole in jeopardy of losing the ability to send our recyclables to York County due to high contamination rates. The purpose of this agenda item is to give council the opportunity to, to discuss open various ideas of how potentially of how to potentially enforce compliance. So, any discussion on this item? And some thoughts? I bet you do. I bet I do. <laughs> um, so I think that everybody has done a really great job, as mentioned by the mayor. Um, the city has done an excellent job. Um, I think the residents have done an excellent job for the most part. Um, there's always a few in the bunch that, you know, choose not to follow the rules. And I would hate to lose what we've worked so hard to get back um, because of that. Um, my suggestion would be through volunteers from the community to do some kind of spot check to literally just open up the can, check it out, and not to dig through. I'm not talking about trash diving here, um, but to literally just do a, wow, you have like four, five plastic bags or all of your bag things are bagged or I don't know. Whatever it is, we put a little sticker on it. They skip that particular pickup for that week. Signature then sees that. They don't pick up the can for that particular week. Maybe we give them a couple times that they can do that, and then finally we'll pull their cart at some point. Um, whatever guidelines we want to set in, in motion. Um, that is kind of my overall suggestion, but I that's just throwing. Well, and the reality of this conversation is that we're about to lose the ability to recycle in the city. Again. No matter how hard these guys have worked and, you know, had an integral part of partnering with the county to be able to have the ability to recycle and it's it's about to go away because of our citizens here in Tiga K contaminating what's going on to the recycle bin. So I don't know the solution. That's that's one suggestion. When I saw it on the on the agenda last week, it's mm, what do you do? Yeah. Well, I don't I don't think we have a choice but to do something. I mean, 99% uh, of the city is doing what they're supposed to do, and the 1% that either doesn't care or I, I don't want to put words in somebody's mouth, that 1% is going to jeopardize a city that's been known for recycling to, to lose the ability to do so. I mean, I, I remember way back when, when we first started, you know, it was one day a month, and it quickly became obvious that we recycled so much that we couldn't do just one day a month. So they switched it to every other. And I mean, I'm proud of that, you know, that we, as a city, I mean, we're supposed to care about the lake, the environment and everything else here. So I'm real proud of that fact. And now we got a few people that are jeopardizing the whole thing. So we have to enforce it somehow. I mean, I like your idea. I know we've kind of raised that before. I, I don't know who's going to volunteer to do it. And I hope, to, but we have to do something. We can't just continue to say, to put messages out on Facebook and on our website that, you know, hey, this is good and this is bad, you can't do it. People are still putting their, their lawn debris in their recycle bin. I can understand maybe somebody putting the wrong kind of can in there or a piece of plastic in it, but I think we all know that you can't put leaves and, and grass clippings in there. All right, they're doing it on purpose. They just don't care. So we can't allow them to do it and mess it up for the rest of us. Eagle Scout project for someone? Anybody out there listening? <laughs> Do, do we really think that um, the contamination that we've seen is people just blatantly don't care about recycling in the environment? Or do we have any sort of information that would state, like, the homes or the loads are in areas where, you know, maybe they're elderly or people that don't wouldn't have Internet access or things like that that aren't able to be educated? Right. Well, b based on what we've gotten from the county uh, when we've had the rejected loads, and then tracing that tr that specific truck from Signature Waste as to where it went uh, is primarily been in the Lake Ridge, um, Serenity Point, Gardendale, Cameron Creek area, I and the windjammer wind areas. Folks. So um, that's that's where the contaminated loads have come from. So you've kind of got you know, a little bit of the uh, you know, tight lots, traditional TKK area with with the windjammer. 
um, beyond, because uh, it doesn't just pick up Windjammer, but basically from Windjammer going towards the firehouse, uh, you know, Timberlake and those roads. So you've got some of that, but then you've also got the new sections as well. Uh, and that's where they have, uh, the, the largest rejected loads have come from. So uh, as far as pinpointing it, you know, was it you know, in a predominantly uh, senior area or things like that? It, it really isn't. Um, it's, uh, yeah, I've, I've seen some of the social media posts that, oh, well, you know, City Oasis picking up trash cans and dumping it with the recycles, and that's not the case either. I mean, they've got cameras on the trucks. They're dumping recycle carts. Um, you know, there's bags and bags of recycled material in the, in the cart, you know, but the bagged items is what's making it a, a rejected load. Um, and, and stuffed into those bags are, as Mr. Machuna said, you know, lawn debris, you know, leaves and dirt and things like that. So uh, I don't think it's a, a matter of signature waste contaminating 35% of a truckload with, by picking up trash cans. Um, I'm, I'm not sure what the answer is, but we're, we're more than willing and able to, to try to participate and help in this. No what doubt. percentage so, of the toters do you guys think have, have the new labels on them? No, the actual new labels that were updated. I know mine stays way down the hill, so it's not. But have we kind of looked at that to see or ask, hey, what, how many toters do you have? How many new labels are on them? When we passed out the flyers individually from neighborhood to neighborhood, and I did all of Trail Ridge myself, um, we also put a new sticker with each of those. Um, and so I would say the majority, the vast, there, there may be a house or two here or there that got skipped. Mm -hmm. I can't speak to everyone, but I would say that the vast majority of every house was hit and those two things, what you can and cannot recycle was put in there and the sticker for your cart was put in there. So we purchased 5,000, well, Signature Waste purchased uh, for us 5,000 of the new recycle stickers. We have 200 of them left. So, and you've got about 4,200, yeah, addresses in TGK, so I, I, I would have to agree with Ms. Overman. I think the, the overwhelming majority got the stickers. Now, they didn't put them on. I can't right. speak to that, but they got them. Most of them. Everybody got them. So I love the idea of uh, utilizing volunteers, especially because I know that there's so many advocates for recycling in our area. Um, and, you know, with a group of volunteers, you can do a lot more than you could with maybe like one or two co code enforcement people or city staff or whatnot. Um, I'm wondering if, though, before we, could, we, we start doing any sort of enforcement or, like, not picking up, if we utilize the volunteers to do door knocking or something like that to actually educate individually. Because sometimes it just takes that conversation um, to, to get to some folks. And I know that that sounds hard, too. Um, but I, I don't know about volunteers enforcing or, or determining whether or not someone gets there. Um, their load picked up. I, I don't know. I think that would be really hard <laughs> to knock on 4,200 doors. I, I, As somebody who's knocked on a lot of doors, I don't, I don't, I don't think it would be easy either. <laughs> um, I'm just trying to think of, you know, other other ways we could help educate people, um, because you know, there it could even be like, you know, our, our, you know, hopefully it's not, but it could even be city facilities that. You know, we, we've got employees that don't live here, so maybe they're not getting the message, or you have um, guests that are staying at your house and maybe they don't know. I mean, how do you get to, how do you get to everyone? And I know that door knocking wouldn't necessarily fix all of that, but. Is there any public comments? Anybody in the audience have any ideas of anything that could possibly help? Because it's going to go away if we continue. Come up to the microphone. Got to come up. Got to yeah, come up. Got it. So you can be on record. <laughs> if you want people to start recycling, if you're not going to take their recycling, don't take their trash. One week with no trash taken, and they'll start recycling. I like the way you think. <laughs> now you see why our kids are so well behaved. Kelly Macaluso, 25034 Timberlake. Um, I called the city a couple times um, because we've noticed that the fire department has black plastic bags in their recycle bin. Mm-hmm. Aha. Uh -huh. uh -huh. so. Found the culprit. 
Okay. So it occurred today again, and they and they did take their cans. So, you know, it's frustrating for us because now we see we've worked very hard on our block and um, our mm -hmm. household to make sure we recycle, and now that truck is probably going to the dump. So, um, addressing that would be great. And I think tagging and fining, um, not taking their recycles. I mean, if that's the only thing that's going to um, keep the rest of us being able to recycle, then do what you got to do. If you need volunteers, we got got volunteers. Awesome. Thanks, Kelly. Thank you. That's great until it gets cold. <laughs> <laughs> that would be my recommendation, unless anybody has any other grand plans, is to see if Lacey can maybe put it in the rewind or something like that, garner up some volunteers. We can train them as to exactly what needs to be in there, and then do some kind of sticker on the cart. Hey, we noticed that you have XYZ materials in there. In, Whether you in choose preparation to for the signature waste has uh, given, if this was the route we were, uh, council decided to go, signature waste has given us the, the uh, oops stickers, whatever, so they, they have agreed to supply those to us. Um, as far as putting out the information on Rewind soliciting the volunteers, um, we're, we're really going to need somebody to help champion that from a, from a um, staff is slammed. I mean, to be to yeah. be quite honest. So I mean, we're more than willing to help watch push out, thing communicate, things like that. Team but I mean, I've got yeah, I've got yeah. staff members that are drinking from fire hoses right now with with so much going on. Um, so I saw you put your hand in the air. So I'm mean, more than happy to, co to help coordinate with that. Was that'd be great. When I think communicating how dire the situation really is, mm -hmm. it's a month away from going away. Correct. So okay, we can do that. All right, I'd make city manager's report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council. I'll uh, try to be brief. Um, recreation uh, improvement plan project update. The Turner restroom facility uh, is completed. Trailhead basketball court uh, upgrades are underway. The fencing has been repaired uh, and stained. Uh, the steps in the parking lot are underway, should be finished by the end of the week, and the restriping of the uh, court um, should take place before the end of the month, if not sooner. Um, work has begun at Rundy Park. Three of the four sides uh, have been repaired and repainted, um, and work is underway on the restrooms. Once that's completed, the deck will be expanded uh, to, to wrap that project up. Bocce ball courts uh, should get started soon with a goal of uh, completing them by month's end. Uh, and the lighting at the pickleball and tennis courts started today, should be finished by the end of day tomorrow. Uh, and I still don't have any word yet from um, uh, SCDNR on the um, uh, grant for Windjammer. Um, I have not heard from them. Uh, so I, I'm assuming they're still waiting on the York County um, delegation. Uh, so that's where that, that part of the, of the plan is. Um, the next concert is August 17th with uh, Ultimate Aldine as our headliner. It's a um, Jason Aldine uh, tribute band. Should be a great show, and we look forward to seeing everyone out at that one. Um, July 4th, I um, wanted to spend a quick second on that. Uh, it was an amazing day, even with the brief rainstorm in the afternoon. Big thank you to uh, Joey Blethen and Lacey uh, Armstrong for their efforts in organizing the day and uh, sharing all the fun uh, through our social media. Uh, thank you to Emily Jackley, who uh, actually is here tonight, uh, and uh, the volunteers that she helped organize to help us out as well. Also, I'd like to thank Chief Parker and Chief Hasty and, and their departments for all their efforts uh, with public safety that day and keeping everybody uh, uh, safe. It takes a lot of planning and organizing to pull off so many uh, wonderful events in one day. And, I really couldn't be prouder of staff and their efforts. Um, they just do a tremendous job. Um, and I, I think everybody has a good understanding of why Joey's uh, favorite day of the year is July 5th, uh, <laughs> the day after all of that. Um, we have received five bids uh, on our C Fund road work uh, for this year. Tim Gillette is working with our engineer to certify the bids, and we'll bring that to, uh, to council at your August meeting um, for our hopeful bid award, and then um, hopefully get those projects started uh, soon thereafter. Um, as a reminder, July 27th, we're having our official ribbon cutting and grand opening for our new police station. Uh, we'll begin at 11 a.m. sharp, and after the ribbon cutting, members of our police department will be taking anyone that wants to go on a guided tour 
uh, they'll be able to do so, um, and they'll guide them from, from spot to spot uh, and explain everything. There's also going to be uh, barbecue and hot dogs. It's free. Uh, it'll be out in the parking lot, uh, and they're going to have some little activities and things for the kids. So it's definitely a family-friendly event. Um, members of the general public, uh, there will not be parking at the police station for you. You can park at City Hall, park at Trailhead. Um, ride a bike, you know, what have you. Uh, but for um, city council and our dignitaries that will be attending, we will have parking for you at the, uh, at the station. Um, half of the parking lot is going to be taken up by the food and the festivities and things. So uh, that's why it's going to be a little bit limited there. But we hope everybody can attend um, and, and come see the new facility. Um, and last but not least, candidate filing uh, for the November election will open on August the 7th and will close on September the 6th. Cost 25 bucks, put your name in the hat. <laughs> so uh, August, again, that's August 7th, and we'll close on September 6th. Uh, the last day to register to vote in person is August 4th. Last day to register online at scvotes.org is October 6th, and the last day to register by mail is October 7th. It's got to be postmarked by that date, and election day is November 5th. Uh, so we'll be getting all that information uh, here in the coming week up on the uh, website uh, for all to know. Um, Filing is over at the Voters Commission office over in York. And that concludes my report for this evening. Can I put up my signs yet? 30 days. <laughs> 30 days. All right. Thank you, Charlie. Item 9 is council comments. We'll start with Ryan Richard. Um, I just have the one regarding the amendment to the agenda. Um, grouping four items together for us all to vote on once, to me, makes absolutely no sense. The one we were here for a special council meeting a week ago discussing procurement and contracting and gave staff specific direction to get that done. It's important. And now today, because of whatever reason, personal schedules or didn't have time to read it or whatever that is, we decided to group it in with an all yes vote. I just don't think it's the right thing to do. So I wanted to let everybody know that. That's it. I'm done. Thank you. Uh, Alicia? Uh, I just wanted to thank uh, staff for a great 4th of July. You guys did a great job. And so thank you for uh, making TK look great. And it was fun. We thank had a you. lot of fun with the family. Uh, and then I just want to thank uh, Officer Josh for uh, giving me the, the tour of the police station. It looks great. I'm excited about the grand opening coming up and um, looking forward to, to that day when we've got a great police station. Thank you. Gus? Um, I also want to thank uh, staff for all the hard work for July 4th. That's a really special day here in TKK, and, and I, I love it every year, and it was, I know how much work it was. Um, congratulations and thank you to Sharon, Nick, and Matthew for volunteering to um, help our community, and congratulations to you. I don't know how many people watch this, but if you're not getting it yet about recycling, I don't know what it's going to take, but, you know, whoever's not, don't take that away from the rest of us. Okay, I know it's none of you out there, but maybe somebody's watching, so that's all I got to say. I heard it was Windjammer. Heather? I'm just going to echo what everybody else said. Um, thank you for a great 4th of July. Thank you to all the staff. Um, I'm excited about the recreational improvements that we're making throughout the city, so make sure you stop by at one of the many facilities that are being upgraded. Um, Gus, David, and I will be going to our MASC conference later this week. You guys are going, right? Okay. Um, in Greenville, uh, so we leave... Um, I guess that's Thursday this weekend. I don't want to go, but I have to go. Oh, well, I want to go because we get to learn new exciting things about how to do city business. Um, so that's what I got. Yep, and I just want to echo about 4th of July. If you guys go on vacation on 4th of July, you are missing the best time. This city does the 4th of July better than any place I've ever been. It's 15 hours. I'm wore out by the end of the day. I sleep like a baby. It's the only day of the year I sleep like a baby. It's great. Um, and, Charles, do we have any, Susan, do we have any updates on the crosswalks? Oh, you want to come up here? That's fine. Yeah. Not retired anymore. Get your butt up there. Welcome back. Welcome back. Um, the first uh, step is our pedestrian study. And uh, uh, we have to go through all the that. RFATS consultant asked us when would be the appropriate time to do that study. And we chose to postpone that study until uh, school reconvenes um, in August mm -hmm. because we think that that will be a higher pedestrian yes. counts. Yep. And that's do what we have it's to pay for that study? important to do. So it's only about a month delay. So. Do we have to pay for it? No. Okay. Because <laughs> I thought. 
How silly if we have to pay our, for it. Our to match get it. comes out of our annual allocation to RFATS. Okay. So, so August or September, we have to do the study? The, the study will be when school starts back yeah. in, into uh, session in August. Okay, great. Okay, so if anybody wondered what we're talking about, the lighted, three light. Yeah, they're called rapid flashing. Rapid beacons. flashing, yeah. Is a lighted um, crosswalk we would ask for. Um, for is it uh, Heron Harbor? What's the name of the we, first we've street? We've applied for actually six crosswalks, right. but I. I uh, What's the first one we wanted right here up? Heron Harbor. Correct. And it wouldn't do any good to. They, they, of course, anytime you ask for federal funds, you got to do a study. And uh, it's, they're about $10,000 each. And we, we got them down to about 7000 I think it was. And, and then they said, oh, you got to do a study. Well, if the study was 15000 it didn't do any good to, get a, to do a $15,000 study on a $7,000 crosswalk. So then we got kind of, well, then forget it. And then they said, oh, no, we'll, we'll do the study for you. Okay, then that's good again. So we kept going back and forth. But then it doesn't do any good to do a study in the summer because nobody's crossing the walk. So Susan was yeah. very good about, okay, let's do it when the kids are back in school. Great. So we it was highs and lows and highs and lows all the time. So now, good, we're doing it yeah, in our August. Our first step is since the uh, rapid trash, uh, flashing beacons are not included in the Manual of Uniform Traffic Control, uh, which is what SEDOT uses in federal highways, we had to get approval from Washington with federal highways. Nothing's easy when you're dealing allow, with the federal allow government. Allow us to even pursue the study. So yeah. that, that took a little while. Okay, great, thank you. Okay. So this has been going on now for seven months, six months? Whew. Okay, okay, so uh, motion to adjourn to executive, no. motion to adjourn to executive session. I have a second. All in favor, say, say, say aye. Aye, we're in executive session.